Hi. Namaskar and a very warm welcome to everyone joined in today on our 50th Know Your Species, Know Your Zoo talk. This talk is being organized by the Central Zoo Authority New Delhi as part of the ongoing Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav. The Mahotsav is a 75 week long celebration to commemorate 75 years of India's independence, which falls on the 15th of August 2022. The Central Zoo Authority is taking the celebration forward through a massive outreach campaign entitled Conservation to Coexistence, The People Connect. Under the helm of this campaign, we will be showcasing 75 conservation priorities, species and 75 zoos, highlighting one species and one zoo each week. We are currently in week 50 of the celebration with the 50th species being the Asian brown tortoise and the 50th zoo being the Lady, uh, Lady Hyderi Park Kam Mini Zoo, Meghalaya. So joining in today to speak to us on the species is, Dr. is Ms. Arpita Datta, who is the consultant at the Tur Turtle Survival Alliance India. She has worked in the field of wildlife science for, over, for close to two decades now and has been engaged in different conservation projects on wildlife rescue and rehabilitation as well. She has, she has also been instrumental in developing various community sustainability programs in her area of work and is a wildlife expedition leader for the national for the for natural habitat adventure where WWF is a corporate leader a corporate partner sorry she will speak to us today more on the species and focus highlighting its features and ecology so over to you Arpita I will share the screen for you uh, I think you have to unmute yourself okay am I audible Yes, you're. Yeah, for, thank you so much, Arundhati. That was a, a nice uh, introduction. And, uh, th and thank you also to CZA and the Environment Ministry uh, to invite for the talk because it's been definitely a pleasure to share whatever I know. Uh, so when we talk about turtle and tortoise, of course, that makes me pretty excited all the time. Uh, that That is what the species are all about. And if we go uh, to the Asian giant tortoise, the word giant brings the real, de I mean, the definition of this tortoise. This is uh, the one of the, uh, this is the largest tortoise in the Asia and mainland Asia. And do you know, this is also uh, the primitive, uh, you know, the tortoise species which is existing and at the same time uh, when we talk about the Asian giant tortoise it has a numerous feature and altogether this species become more fascinating but unfortunately this is also becoming uh, this is also a critically endangered species and it's uh, the population is declining so today I'll more focus like a story behind this whole tortoise, how everything is happening with it and how it also behaves staying, uh, staying around us. So first of all, this Asian brown tortoise is a terrestrial uh, species and it falls in the family Tesmite. And this Asian giant tortoise has uh, two subspecies, which is Manoria emis, uh, Amis and the Manoria Amis Fari. So this two uh, species doesn't have much of a difference, but very mitochondrial uh, DNA difference. And it also has the midline pectoral skewed uh, difference. So I'm not going farther into it. Uh, but for this specifications, if you go, the Arundhati, can you change the slide, please? Yeah, so first thing when we talk about the animal, the basic thing we can call about what the how the male look like and how the female uh, females look like. So there are not many difference. Uh, rather, there are not many visual differences, but there are very uh, slight uh, like differences in that. It's like the male when they get mature, uh, they grow thicker and longer tail. The dome shaped uh, carapace is visible and, you know, a uh, slight like uh, plastral concavity because it needs to mound on the female that is there. And of course, the female grows larger than the male. 
but this tortoise, of course, it's uh, near about 30 to 34 kilos. It can be uh, almost half a size of, uh, I mean, half a weight of what I am now. So that that makes you feel that, you know, how big it could be. And when we talk about this uh, uh, slight change. Yeah, so here we some specific uh, thing is what you look at because the scutes are very uh, like tough and they have overlapping scales. And at the same time, in male specifically, the guler scutes are much more stronger and it is little ahead of, I mean, the food come much extended, I would say, extended than the female uh, tortoise. Uh, next. Yeah, so distribution wise, uh, here I have given uh, like a little bit more uh, just just the color, but there are very specific areas which they are found. Mostly in India, the northeastern side and uh, when the eastern and southern part of Bangladesh covering the Myanmar side, the central and southern part of Thailand and which is the peninsula of Malaysia and Sumatra. Now we talk about when we talk about the uh, distribution, uh, what kind of habitat do they leave? Uh, yeah, you can change the slide, Arundhati. Uh, the habitat is more, uh, you know, the animal prefer moisture and where the hilly type of mountain forest and found typically near water. Generally, when we think about tortoise, it's not a turtle, right? Tortoise, they are in the arid region, what we have generally seen. Um, but in case of this one, it, it prefers to be around water. And also at an elevation of 600 meter to 1500 meter for a reptile, 1500 meter, a good elevation. And we can, and the type of area they stay, the habitat, they are mostly like bamboo forest, dry evergreen forest, or mixed forest, which already has a bamboo thicket in it, or near the stream courses and the swampy stream areas. You know, sometimes because uh, you find this big uh, tortoise, like um, wallowing in the, or just dump them into the uh, muddy uh, thing to keep themselves cool, because of course they kind of, uh, I think they kind of uh, don't like uh, in very dry or very warmer uh, climate. So in case of dry season, now come to increase of dry season, all these tortoises have been seen that they become very inactive. Generally, you know, when it's summer and all the activity, their metabolism, all this thing that we know about reptile, but in very dry season, they become inactive. That's, that's kind of good. And also can tolerate temperature of 5 degrees centigrade to, uh, to minus 10. That is, uh, I mean, that is quite a low. I mean, 5 degree to 10 uh, degree centigrade. So while talking about this beautiful habitat, that uh, the thriving, like imagine the forest area, uh, the beautiful land formation, rain, visually it's beautiful. But they are kind of declining from that because they are our threats. So nowadays, the first thing when we talk about conservation, when we talk about extinction, the first thing we, it comes is the degradation of the forest. You know, that habitat loss and over, uh, you know, harvesting, meat consumption, hunting, these are creating this whole problem. And I think uh, because our feeding habit, I mean, human feeding habit are indulged into all this thing. So, of course, uh, they, they are facing a big serious threat or serious decline. But thankfully, in their diet, human are not included. So we are still alive and trying to be the supreme being, which we are not. Uh, so they feed on uh, your bamboo shoots, tubers, other juicy vegetation and also some in invertebrates. And also it has been seen that they are consuming frogs as well. And mushrooms, seedlings, uh, even the roots, and also has been seen to feed on the fallen figs. So that's quite a simple diet they follow, but still pretty strong. Uh, uh, can we change uh, the slide? 
yeah so okay the habitat looks more or less like this um uh, change the slide arunguti yeah so these are the food sorry uh, it's little delayed uh, with the pres uh, i mean slides uh, so these are the things how it looks like and next slide please now it's come to the behavior. Uh, very interesting. Uh, like uh, human being, they have complex characteristic. It's difficult uh, to always get them in the wild. So we have some. We have some, noticed some captive uh, behavior, which I'll just uh, share with you all. <clears throat> the male shows dominance. Still, we are in a patriarchy uh, society. So it goes in with this uh, tortoise as well. Uh, and also they do combat for the females to act to get the access to the female. And also they fight. You remember that guller cute, which is strong, extended. Sometimes when the male do combat, these are the one which almost they, they can stand on the feet, and these are the one which you know protects or rather uh, helps them to hit each other, hurt each other. Quite a boxing, huh? to get the territory and get hold of the female. There is always a fight. Uh, so, and with that, it's unbelievable when you hear them. I mean, while they're approaching to the female or trying to mount, they may, they vocalize. And that vocalize is so loud, like, ah, ah. sorry, I'm making a bad noise, but this is how it is. and. Uh, it's funny to look at because, you know, even the male and the others who are around, they keep, they also do that head bobbing thing and which is funny to look at. And, but also interesting that it seems like, you know, that male is trying to get accepted by the female and the whole procedure has been accepted or kind of, kind of, you know, uh, what do I say? Uh, like, when others are saying, okay, okay, suppose you are getting married and everybody says yes to it. So it's something like that. Uh, so this is, this is how they uh, do it. But after the courtship, it's all about the female, how it behave after that. Imagine a tortoise. Uh, we have heard or we have seen in many uh, areas that they dig up the soil, especially for the sea turtle we see. But here the female gather the lot of gathered or scrape all the leaf uh, litter and make a mound just like the king cobra okay and they stay on the nest for days or for weeks before abandoning the nest just like the king cobra so there are some similarities we find in many but this guarding the nest has been has not been seen in many tortoise as we see it in this and also in manoria Presa, the other uh, species of uh, the tortoise. And after that, the female moved and after 60, can we change the slide? Yeah, this is how the female is guarding uh, the nest. Uh, next. Yes, and this is how if you move, move remove the foliages or the uh, leaves, you find this beautiful uh, like ping pong ball type of uh, eggs. And uh, can you uh, next slide, please? Yeah, and after just 65 to 70 days, these uh, brilliant babies do come out. And to do that, uh, they need a proper uh, maintenance of temperature and humidity. So a preferable temperature is 25 to 28 degrees centigrade and uh, the humidity should remain uh, 70 to 90 percent. So it's a little dicey when you are doing it in captivity uh, because uh, the surrounding temperature are not always like that. But yes, that can be a very big successful rate. So next slide. And this is how you uh, like you nurture them in the captivity they are happy with each other it looks like at least and they have this feeding behavior they kind of when the food are given they are like all come together feed it just like you know the school children the different time is there all rush around and then they start feeding on it uh, next slide yes and this is how they start growing and reach from a tiny ball shaped uh, tortoise 
to this bigger tortoise. These are these are very juvenile. These are just a year, two year old, uh, one to two year old in between. Uh, now, next slide. So how this whole uh, conservation process has started. The thing is, we have been like this species has been described in 1840. So it's been almost uh, 140 years before even I was there. So bring that and it's declining even when I'm standing here or I believe that many of you are in this uh, era right now. This is declining and there I think the freshwater turtle conservation programs has come up with. So TSA Turtle Survival Alliance is the organization who look after or who always want to bring back the species who are critically endangered in the wild or endangered species. And here I'd like to tell a story of our TAC India director, Dr. Shailendra Singh. So in 2012, in, he went to Imphal in Ukrul, you know, to check that whether this species is still there, how many species are there. But while doing that, uh, he got, uh, you know, uh, abducted, I would say, or uh, just kidnapped by the Maoist over there because they don't know who is this tall person and they thought something else. But turtle makes you fall in love in such a way that more con it is more convenient, you know, that, okay, if somebody picks you up, that is more fine rather than, you know, avoiding those areas. But thankfully, he came back nicely. They have uh, treated him very well. And after that, they found one individual. And after finding that one individual that come across, they have started serving all the zoo with five colonies, uh, which is colony mean there and uh, numeral uh, number of uh, tortoise were there. And the five zoos were Dimapur, Meghalaya, Difu, Ingfall, and Mizoram. And the first MOU was signed uh, with Nagaland Zoo in 2017 and the conservation breeding took place in 2018. So yes, it took one year. Of course, it, it takes time to settle down everything. And the first we got our eggs is 42 number of eggs and there were 20% of success and still we have those hatchlings. That's amazing. I mean, today is 2022 and we have all the hatchlings. We know that when we have started with and in 20, uh, can we, uh, yeah, can we change the slide? And in 2020, during the COVID time, uh, 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 thankfully that uh, we have, uh, uh, TSA has hired one researcher dedicated to that program is uh, Shushmita Kaur. And uh, she has been looking after the whole uh, scenario, whatever is happening out there with the assistance of our field assistant, Lalit Budhani. And they are doing an incredible job. So, the first thing when now we are thinking of releasing it back. So the first releasing method, what we need to do is to reiki that area where we are thinking or where the population could be there. <clears throat> Trust me, while doing that reiki, you have to climb mountains, uh, get down into streams, uh, get numerous leeches on you. But I, I could figure out that how tough for a tortoise to just climb to be on those slopes of those mountains where I'm where we were thinking if if we sleep just for once we would be somewhere in the uh, somewhere down and with broken bones they are amazing <coughs> sorry and this is how the habitat look and the habitat whether there are food availability is there and stuff this has to look on and just the third picture see they are about to be released so I think they are already excited, uh, just covering near the uh, window where they see the outside world. And one important thing uh, before releasing for any tortoise or turtle, but mostly in tortoise, which is mandatory, that is the mycoplasma test. So that any kind of cough cold thing, because they are the virus without the cell wall. So they, if they get affected, you know, that is very dangerous. Uh, prone to for the tortoise and the total nucleated uh, cell count, the TNC test, and then the herpes uh, virus. And this herpes virus are very prone uh, to happen to the reptiles. This is a mouth infection for which they stop feeding. And of course, for a longer period of time, if they cannot eat, 
gradually it is the time i mean it uh, the time comes when they cannot survive next slide please yes so here i would like to say because uh, we find the population in bangladesh and in south asia tsa is uh, tsa i mean this whole conservation program what we are seeing or what we have known tsc is supporting this whole activity this whole conservation program and want to create a model a uh, transboundary program between all these uh, areas and saving species of course and when we talk about bangladesh of course there are they in bangladesh and it's happened in myanmar as well uh, can we go to the next slide yeah so in uh, both the cases uh, the turtles uh, the sorry the tortoises have been released so in uh, this is this is uh, a great news because when we are when our effort comes together and the animal helps to respond in them we get the chance to give them another life rather it gives us a life i'll tell you why because you know um TSA is always uh, towards the habitat uh, conservation as well, because in a broader spectrum, if you save the habitat, this tortoise will, uh, the tortoise will stay alive. Not only tortoise, all the species I believe, uh, who are thriving or who are fighting for existence, they would be forest restoration or. taking the forest to protect the forest area is the main thing what we all can work on and then can we go to the next slide and here are uh, are the first i mean there is a big success which happened in nagaland in the okha district tsa has signed an mou with the tribes there that if the tortoises are being released in those areas they are not going to harm they would look after look after in the sense they will keep an eye so that nobody uh, you know hunt or nobody poach these uh, tortoises and whatever news they are getting about the tortoises after release so that they bring all those information to us to understand that what else we can do or any support these tortoises are uh, need or not and another thing was happened um next slide <clears throat> is our uh, the hornbill festival we had a stall this year in uh, hornbill festival uh, because you know in hornbill festival there are so many tribes come together they get to know about the importance of the uh, species and also different uh i mean people visit from different areas of the world and of course from india itself it's a huge festival uh for this uh, thing and presenting this species over there i think that was a big success to reach out to aware more uh, people who are you know staying who are uh, who are still unaware of this critically endangered brown tortoise um next yes so uh i i literally uh, thank you but uh, i would uh, definitely uh, love to uh, acknowledge or thank to many people in this because you know conservation not is not a cup of tea or it's not like a one man uh, army show a lot of warriors we need to conserve any of the species and here we have a we have a big support from the nagaland forest department nagaland zoological park czda mbz tcf these are the institutes who are all who has been supporting us all the time uh, dr uh, zupeni uh, uh, sanglai dr prabhat kumar dr shailendra singh jordan gray nathan ha uh, hasli shushmita lalit budani parimal uh kalyar pat who is uh, the uh, who is uh, the program director of myanmar caesar uh, rahman who is an associate he isn't from bangladesh he is a tsa associate so see so many people but i'm sorry that if i haven't named anyone because i think being a very important species every citizen of india every citizen of all the countries who are who i mean where this tortoise is present should be aware of this and they can spread the awareness by anyhow however they can 
we just need to save them thank you so much for listening to me and i would just read out uh, sorry it's okay it's okay <laughs> Absolutely fine. Uh, <clears throat> the thing is, uh, yeah, just to, I would I would like to read out this that every being who is trying to make progress where this space sound, no matter how slowly or little fight uh, like extinction need uh, your help rather needs your help and not ignorance. You are listening to this talk or this whole seventy five species. You are listening to the talk and then it's okay done. Not yet. The day you start thinking of the forest, thinking of the uh, like conservation, think of the species. I think the conservation in your mind starts from then. So everyone is invited. Everyone in the world is like can put their hand together to bring all the species back in the wild in good population. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Arpita, for the wonderful talk, you know, where in, in a very short span you've tried to, you know, encapsulate the entire uh, history of the species and the kind of work that's being done. Uh, we will take question answers for this session uh, once the Know Your Zoo uh, talk is over. So now we now move on to the Know Your Zoo talk for today's uh, Know Your Species, Know Your Zoo talk. And we have with us Mr. Gavari Sachin Shankar, who is the Divisional Forest Officer of Kasi Hills Wildlife Division and the officer in charge of the Lady Hyderi Park Company. Zoo. So Mr. Shankar is an Indian Forest Service Officer of the 2014 batch and has worked with the Meghalaya Forest Department uh, for the past six years and uh, has been handling matters pertaining to the management of forests so far. So he will speak to us today more on the zoo. So over to you, sir. I'll, uh, should I share the presentation for you? Um, so is it visible for you? I think you have to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, madam? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir, please proceed. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think uh, I will say Arbita has given a very nice talk. Uh, thank you, madam, for this. Uh, I think, uh, as you mentioned, one of the habitat for the uh, this Asian giant turtle is in Meghalaya. I would like to request you to share these uh, areas where we can take conservation uh, in coordination with your organization. And I am, I, am I am happy to say that at least we have one such uh, species in our uh, zoo. So uh, just we'll uh, go ahead with uh, uh, this uh, about my presentation. This. Uh, this lady Hydri Park, uh, just first slide. That's that is. Uh, this is a mini zoo. Uh, it was not zoo actually. When once we go through the history, we'll find that it was just a rescue center. Now new zoo is coming up for uh, Megala. It is a Megala State Zoo in Umtru. I will share about that later on. So this is uh, mainly located within the city because it was earlier park. So it was meant for recreational purpose. Uh, just it has lawn and some uh, garden. So, but it, later on, once it came to wildlife division, it, we converted into zoo. So, it is uh, in the heart of the city. It caters not just to the recreational needs of the urban Shillong population, but also to tourists who visit the Shillong. So, total area of this zoo come park is the 3.5 hectare. Out of that, 1.3 hectare around area is uh, for the zoo. So, you can see how small it is. But anyhow, still we are uh, we are uh, uh, nurturing some few species of the animals and the birds. Uh, so is uh, just this park is consists of small wildlife museum. It is just one room, one picturesque lawn and children park, and most importantly, 
we have a zoo which has animal cages 15 because there is not much space so uh, whatever space available for us we are keep, keeping animal cages there is one every not big but still it is there and there are three enclosures mainly for the deer species so additionally in a significant way uh, this lady hedri park mini zoo is spreading wildlife awareness through various programs conducted there next so this is map. Uh, I think this is not a clear image. Uh, so just I will uh, just tell you uh, this is a green part which is on the upper side. It is this is the park area where there is a lawn and there are people who come for um, uh, visit. And there is children, uh, a small children uh, park is kind of playground is also there. So just uh, while coming back down this uh, yellow zone with the uh, inclined lines is the zoo area actually where we keep the animals and the down area which you see in a gray dark gray area it is just parking facility it has been coming up it is under construction so this is the overall the layout of the um, Lady Hedri Park next. So once we go in history, is just I will go in briefly. Uh, it was justly um, just uh, it was previously a Meghalaya was a part Meghalaya and all northeast state were part of the Assam. So Assam, whoever is the um, uh, this commissioner there, they will generally uh, keep the park name from their end. So they kept uh, one Sir Robert Neil Reid. He was the go governor of the Assam. He kept. Uh, name from uh, Lady Reed Pleasure Park. Then, when there was again change in governorship, then again a new governor, Sir Akbar Hydri, who took over charge and she, he named as the Lady Hydri Park. So, from there, the name remains same. Uh, but uh, during this uh, free, freedom struggle, also this park was in uh, uh, in highlight because they were keeping ashes of uh, Gandhiji's for darshan of public and delivering lecture by the Sardar Vallabhai Patel. This was all organized in this park, so it has a historical uh, background also for this park, and it has uh, witnessed so many historical events. Uh, we'll come to uh, this, this, and then 1973 it comes under deputy commissioner. Unlike other states where there is collector here in Northeast, we call collector as a deputy commissioner, which nomenclature is generally not uh, very familiar uh, in uh, plain uh, other states except Northeast. So deputy commissioner of Khasi, he was then handed over it to the forest department in 1973. And then later on it was handed over to wildlife wing then wildlife wing started keeping some risky animals and that zoo come up like that so it was not planned zoo it was just a kind of a temporary arrangement made for the skew uh, the rescue animals so they when the central zoo authority came then as per their norm it it was uh, declared as a mini zoo because of the less area and uh, so this is the background just next slide, please. So this is objective, which is generally all the zoos have. So it's just to nurturing the environment for all exhibited animals in zoo to provide the proper health care facility to the rescued animals uh, and the zoo animals also, which are kept for the ex uh, exhibit and to promote the zoo as a center of conservation and awareness by organizing various outreach activities. We do some activity. So I will uh, highlight that also in uh, some uh, after some time. Next. So this is the organizational chart. This is not very clear. Uh, I, I know from, but still this is the what is the DFO is the um, who is the in charge. Uh, uh, just down to the hierarchy is curator come range forest officer. One post is there. So one ranger is looking after this zoo. Then we have forest guard. Uh, forest uh, this uh, zookeeper so they are all in hierarchy so forest guard and forester they look uh, after the uh, oversee the work of the uh, zoo feeders and the mali and the, uh, this chowkidar next so these are some animals uh, which uh, we have uh, these are the uh, species and the numbers 
uh, generally uh, leopard cat is not uh, others state there think it is leopard it is not leopard it is a cat is small in size uh, phyllis bengalensis so this is one number where there are uh, rescued three four numbers are there but they are not actually on our record so there are so many uh, leopard cat we rescue every time and we release in the um, habitat so rhesus macaw is common to see in our uh, wildlife sanctuary also we have 10 numbers then stump tailed macaw it is very shy animal but we have one himalayan black bear we have so we rescue so many black bears and we release also some but these are the three which are in our captivity then we have common fox uh, clouded leopard a uh, clouded leopard is very shy animal when you come for daytime to see this animal you will not find it it is generally remains inside his house which is cage actually so then deer species are there three and one reptile which is asian brown tortoise we have only one which is the female uh, and we have not seen much behavioral activities what uh, arpita ji told that like sound goose sound and all that because it is alone so we have not seen much behavioral activities of this tortoise but anyhow we have one so these are some animal species we have 10 species uh, next so these are some um, uh, pictures uh, so these are sambar uh, which is sitting then sambar and some hog deers are there uh, and one leopard cat you can see uh, and some uh, bears next so these are bird species we have total 12 bird species uh, goose bird headed uh, this is one only uh, there are so uh, these are all the birds uh, out of which we had uh, some uh, injured endangered also so these uh, species uh, we have so many species of owl actually in meghalaya out of that we have two uh, which are very big like uh, um, uh, brown fish owl and uh, brown wood owl so these are two species we have quite good and we rescue every time uh, so many species this uh, owl species but we release in the habitat pelican we earlier had three but now we had two species uh, two numbers only uh, then uh, eagle we have crested serpent one uh, spotted dove we have six and duck, chinese ducks we have one so these are 12 uh, we have one ivory for the birds and some uh, like pelican and uh, this uh, chinese geese we have the pond uh, as an enrichment others we just have the uh, cages but we have ivory so we keep there only next <clears throat> so these are some birds who uh, upper side is pelican then this owl and this uh, chinese geese so few photos only next <clears throat> now uh, rather than going in much details about the schedule and all this i just uh, mentioning some things which we take as a as a part of our health management of the zoo animals and birds <clears throat> these are disinfection deworming vaccination feeding these are the parts of these activities and this is a schedule we make for each year it is followed and we it is carried out by a team which is again headed by a veterinary doctor and curator uh, who is a range forest officer so they take uh, care of this we have very small area but within that we uh, try to uh, try to enrich that generally our the zoo whatever animal death happens is uh, generally natural not due to disease or like that anyone uh, is good thing about the shillong zoo or this uh, late Heather zoo as yes, we have kept in good environment there are so many questions raised by so many ngos and uh, wildlife activists that there is not a much space we agree to that because this is not a planned zoo whatever we had we we try to enrich that and we try to manage it uh, to the our best so but we our new zoo is coming up i will show in some last slides how it is looking so that will take care of this health management and habitat also for the animals and the birds which we are keeping in the zoo next 
this is enrichment habitat animation or we can say their enclosure and enrichment we have space restriction you can see the bear also we cannot uh, we don't have enclosure we have to keep in cages cage but is we also feel pity but it's our restriction regarding space this is in the zoo also this zoo is located within the center of city so we cannot keep some animals which makes sound we earlier we had hullock gibbon but it makes kind of uh, sign to mark their territory it is like instinct so that sound makes the too much uh, problem because there is one uh, school just behind our uh, uh, just zoo uh, just border, border to the zoo is uh, pine mount school so we had got so many complaints so we are not keeping that such animals which makes sound so that is why the hula guban is generally rescued so many times but we cannot keep so in reason my keeping some logs elevated platforms etc we do and we try to take care of animals but uh, i think by september we will uh, shift all animals not at all but at least most of them to the new zoo site uh, which is coming up in emthro so they here we have the cages 15 numbers uh, which are used to exhibit animals enclosures kept for the deers are three numbers and we have one aviary uh, and about apart from that we have separate pond for pelican and chinese geese uh, which i already mentioned so these are some activities we take uh, there is not much scope to expand it or to take much activities so these are some activities next rescue and rehabilitation of wild animals this is the main task of one of the main task of this zoo uh, come park uh, this lady hedri park we rescue animal from far away places we keep we treat we check their behavior check their health and most of the time we don't bring them to the zoo if that is okay from that same district we try to release in the habitat where we found it uh, if animal injured or it needs to be taken care or it is uh, if somebody has kept for a long time it is domesticated or if we see some behavioral changes so then we bring it to the zoo and then we keep it under observation mandated observation and then we release so these animals are rescued in and around shillong shillong is the big city which there are so many uh, animals uh, we recently we got so many animals like uh, this civet cat uh, leopard cat uh, then uh, some owl species uh, birds this is common thing in uh, shillong apart from shillong east khasis west khasis and jain hills region uh, Jain Hills region consists of two districts, so we are almost catering to the four or five districts. Uh, in 2021, uh, sorry, I mentioned only 2020 is uh, by mistake. I remember this one has not written. So, so 2020-21, we have rescued 45 numbers of the birds and animals. So these are total rescue. 21-22 till now, we have 13 numbers uh, from our zoo uh, zoo uh, next so apart from these animals we have so many animals in and around our uh, zoo compare because we have park area is also big around uh, 2.2 hectares so there are so many animals and these uh, mammals we see uh, these are some i have mentioned some birds is generally we found everywhere but in premises of that we have so many has the their habitat also they have their nest or their their kind of uh, they are resetting there so these are some mammals next so we have one museum uh, we have some articles which we keep uh, there uh, but now we are going to uh, ship these also to the new zoo site as uh, in part of our interpretation center so these are since long time uh, mostly are from uh, british time uh, when the governors were there so they kept so many animals so so many animals are now we cannot see in meghalaya because meghalaya 4.5 uh, percent of area is only under the state forest department remaining all area around if uh, forest survey of india has uh, not uh, has uh, estimated around 75 percent of the area of meghalaya uh, state is uh, forest out of that we have around five percent only uh, remaining 70 percent and 
overall 95 percent of area of our state uh, uh, state uh, is is under the community here is it's a very unique system of community managed land so they generally have more say in this uh, land so but we are uh, we are making so many community reserves to conserve our wildlife uh, Meghalaya is one has one of the highest number of community reserves and sacred groves around 65 community reserve we have so many are small size but still we are trying to uh, preserve and conserve the habitat of the animals and the uh, flora next now apart from zoo we this is just small activities not related to our presentation just to just highlight some thing these are the some uh, things a children park and lawn and they we have gardens so so many people visit because of this next uh, these are some uh, tourist uh, kind of amenities we have so people come do come for this this will be again part of our new zoo which is coming up at umtru in the river district next so we apart from this our conservation we do conduct so many awareness program so painting competition uh, on wildlife week generally we do so many activities also this part of this uh, celebration of amrut mahotsav so, and also our state has completed 50 years uh, of uh, creation so uh, on golden jubilee also we are having so many competitions so so many are uh, we are carrying out today also there is one cues competition in the one of the area which is not shillong is a maukir one there we are conducting some quiz competition. So this awareness program we do condemn oftenly. Uh, even we keep uh, exposure to for school children also. So these are some activity we take generally. Next, other activities. Uh, there are so many training officers also come for training of to veterinary students and officers uh, like state officers. They have their schedule. So training forest officers and field staff, we conduct awareness and the field training for the these people also. Uh, training uh, this training of students of so forestry also we do conduct. So these are some activities. So many uh, officers who visit from other cast force Dehradun, we make them uh, give them some kind of background of our zoo management. Next. Capacity building of our staff is the most important thing. Uh, we send or they attend the training in the state and outside the state uh, for regarding this zoo management or handling the animals, their rescue, their re rehabilitation. So we do have the trainings. Then we visit nearby zoos also. Uh, there is one big zoo here in Assam, uh, which is state zoo uh, in Guwahati. We have zoos in other states also. We have uh, we do visit these zoos for better for understanding best, best practices. Uh, zookeepers training is there for every two years, so we send them also. So these are overall some capacity building of our staff. Next, this is the state zoo at Umtru, Meghalaya. This is one of the I will not say the one of the best zoo, but you will see uh, as compared to uh, in northeast will have one of the good zoo in the we are planning to inaugurate 15 enclosures by this september or october as part of our celebration of uh, amrit mahotsav also and part of uh, golden jubilee celebration uh, of our statehood of meghalaya so we'll will have we have already started the construction activities next these are some state of art infrastructure like veterinary clinic and all that we'll have because here we don't have such veterinary clinic in our zoo we have only small chamber to treat the animals so we'll have such activities not i will not show everything these are some activities we will take next this is just layout of how the this is big zoo so we'll, we'll we are planning to inaugurate very soon so all animals which you see in a small enclosures or cages we will have the big 
thing there we will also have breeding come conservation program for hulog gibbon also so we hulog gibbon which is one of the endangered species and one of the apes which uh, we found in india uh, so we will have that also next so thanks uh, on behalf of uh, forest and environment department of meghalaya on behalf of khasil's wildlife division and thanks uh, central zoo authority to present our mini zoo case here uh, and thanks arpita ji uh, to give us so much insight on uh, giant asian turtle uh, and if we found this turtle we have in uh, some cases in our uh, state also but if you say if you give us some areas so we'll do, we'll do some conservation here also thanks a lot Thank you so much, sir, for giving a brief uh, overview of the uh, zoo as such and the future plans that you have in place. So we now move on to question answer session for today's talk. So Arvita will take, first take up questions for you. So the first question uh, for you is that, um, just a second, it says that, is there any record of the species from Assam or the Rai regions of North Bengal? Uh, uh, no. Bengal, I don't know. Uh, if any of my colleague who is there, they can answer. Uh, but in Assam, of course, yes. Okay, it's there. All right. Uh, the next question for you is that uh, do the uh, are the nest territories that the, that are made actively defended? Uh, the male nest, the nest that uh, that are made, are they actively are the territories around the nest actively defended? Uh, see the. Female uh, actually aggressively guard the necks, uh, the nest for the, I mean, to the intruders that has been seen, but uh, I don't know about the territory part that, you know, is even like a few hundred meters away. If they see they approach, it's not, but when they are around the nest, definitely they do it very aggressively right. yeah. with vocalization, with its, uh, you know, uh, activity, what they do, especially the female. That you mm. can understand that she's not liking you to be there. Yeah. All right. Okay. And uh, so the next question for you is that what kind of habitat? So you mentioned about the habitat the species prefers. Uh, what are the other Ceylonian species that uh, share this kind of habitat? And what is the resource partition, partitioning like between this species and other sympatrics? Okay. So other species, I think uh, Manoria impressa is there, which uh, is also. Uh, prefers the habitat of a mountain forest. Uh, mm. And also for, if I talk about other, which is mostly seen in the foothills is the elongated tortoise as well. It's mostly, you know, the mountain forest, the wet habitat uh, that is more preferable for this kind of uh, tortoise. If any other points are there, please uh, answer. I, I know that if there are TSA people out here, so they can definitely answer if there are something rest to say. Uh, okay, uh, so then we just move on to the next question. Uh, the next question yes. for you is that uh, from the, so you have, you have like programs for the out, like for community awareness across, you know, and transboundary, uh, this thing across its distribution range. So what are the kind of community awareness programs implemented for the species conservation in the wild? Like, is there anything that is being done in a in a uh, transboundary kind of is, way? Yes. Uh, so transboundary. So every uh, every country is doing in their own perspective. For in India, it's like mostly important to reach out to the local community or the local tribe and make them understand and aware about the whole uh, conservation process of the species. And of course, nowadays they do understand the things. So according to that, just like uh, meeting up so many people individually in the tribe and talking to them and, uh, you know, asking them or rather requesting them to give us the information. Number one, suppose in Bangladesh, what is happening is uh, what uh, Caesar is mostly doing is to reach out, you know, to the people whenever they need something. Because, you know, in this kind of animal the, who are who belongs from the lesser fauna, this funding thing is a big problem uh, because you cannot reach out financially 
in the conservation area. This is difficult. You have to make them understand. So Caesar generally do, you know, whenever a child need admission, you know, because in village people, they might not go to school to talk to them. So these kind of small steps are taking uh, place. Uh, Myanmar, I won't be able to say, but mostly in the same, you know, uh, it's, it's like a program. It's like a model program what you go that without community people, we won't be able to reach out to as many as place we would like to. So bringing them into the conservation, making them the warrior that you can save a species. I think that ownership thing helps uh, helped us a lot and we are we will keep on doing that. All right, Arpita, I think uh, those were the questions for you. So uh, we now move on to questions for uh, Mr. Shankar. So, sir, the first question for you is, uh, what are the future initiatives of the zoo for captive breeding and uh, and conservation of critically endangered species? If you can, I think you mentioned it in the slide, but we can elaborate again. Yeah, we are <clears throat> mainly uh, planning to do uh, conservation breeding uh, of the Hulab Gibbon. Uh, this is uh, we already uh, has approached the CZA also, and it has been part of our uh, new zoo plan also. So next year we are going to start that. And uh, actually, uh, apart from that, we don't have uh, much program. But this year, uh, Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has again uh, given us note to start one program regarding pros uh, regarding conservation of clouded leopards, which is the state animal of Meghalaya. So that program is also going on. Apart from that, uh, it will be in, but in new zoo, we are planning to have conservation of one or two more species because we will have the bigger area there. In bigger canvas, you can uh, uh, really do some things because this breeding and conservation, it is to be secluded plus we cannot just keep open for public and we just cannot do. And it has it needs some kind of habitat. So we apart from Holog Gibbon, leopard, uh, clouded leopard is there, which we are doing. And if we get some information regarding this uh, giant ties also, we'll definitely take up this. Thank you. Right, so and uh, so the next question for you is that in terms of uh, what do you call uh, outreach activities, what are the like in how how what are the kind of conservation awareness initiatives that the zoo undertakes for you know spreading awareness about uh, say the species, the zoo to the visitors that come and to children. Uh, actually, uh, we have uh, for awareness of uh, the people, we have the some signages. Uh, apart from that, we have one museum uh, and apart from that, uh, whenever these uh, some school or some uh, some departments also or some organization approaches, we do have keep the exposure trip for them uh, apart from the normal time. So we do make awareness apart from that school level essay competition, uh, drawing competition or so many activities we take, but uh, this is uh, this zoo has so many restrictions also uh, because this is a park also. So uh, we have to restrict with time, but we take some activities. Right, sir. Uh, so I think those were the questions for you as well. So with that, we come to an end to our 50th Know Your Species, Know Your Zoo talk. And on behalf of the Central Zoo Authority, I would like to thank both uh, to you, Arpita, and to you, Mr. Uh, Sachin, for taking time out of your busy schedules and joining us for this uh, talk. And I would also like to thank the audience who have been with us throughout this uh, one hour talk on the species and on the zoo. I would also like to inform them that we'll be back next week with our week 51 species and zoo, which is the Hulog Gibbon and the Biological Park Itanagar. So do tune in for that talk next Wednesday from 4 to 5 p.m. And Hilary, uh, Lady Hyderi will be continuing their uh, outreach activities till the end of this week. So do tie, if you're in Meghalaya, do take part in whatever activities they do have planned. And thank you so much once again. Namaskar. Okay, bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah, that's what it should be the part of CJ. So, I have not, not visited Zool, so to be frank. What I, I can't say. I cannot say it. Okay, thank you.